In this video, I'm going to be talking about some more of the span questions that we talked about in lectures eight and nine. So if you haven't watched lectures eight and nine, go ahead and go do that first and then come back. And this video will help you work through some more of the sample problems that you're going to see when you start working with the idea of span. So in those lectures, we talked about two common types of questions. So the question on the left says, is a given vector B in the span of some given vectors, V1 through VP? So remember that the span of V1 through VP, this set right here, is all possible linear combinations of those vectors, of V1 through VP. And a linear combination looks like this. So the question is asking, is B one of those linear combinations? Is B a linear combination of those vectors? And the sort of practical way to think about that is to ask, is it possible to construct a linear combination with scalars x1, x2, and so on up through xp, and make the answer work out to be, the result of that calculation work out to be B? And that's a question that we can solve using an augmented matrix as we've done earlier in the course. So the question on the right is a very different kind of question. Notice that there's in the original question, right, this question here, there is no B. It just says, does the set V1 through VP span Rn? And sometimes we'll even include the words span all of Rn. Because what this question is asking is, is it possible to get every vector, every possible B, as a linear combination of V1 through VP? So you could imagine we could check them one at a time using the method here on the left, but that would literally take forever. So we would have to think of a different way to approach that problem, a different way to think about how could we possibly answer this question no matter what B is. And what we came up with in lecture nine was something called the spanning columns theorem, a theorem that helps us understand how to approach that problem. And we'll go through another example of that in this video. But first let's attack the first type of problem. So again, in this problem, you're given a specific vector B and you're asked, is that vector B in the span of V1 and V2. So the first thing that we want to do is translate this question into a more concrete, a more sort of grounded question that we can attack. And so the question is asking us, and this is what I would write in my solution, right? I would sort of explain to the reader, what am I, how am I interpreting this question? The question is asking us whether the equation x1 v1 plus x2 v2 equals b has a solution, right? That's on that previous slide, that's one of the equivalent ways of thinking about this question of is b in the span of v1 and v2. And now that I have a vector equation, now I can write the augmented matrix for that vector equation. So the augmented matrix for this equation is, and then I can write down my matrix. So a common uh, error here is to just jump to the matrix, is to say, oh yeah, 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 this is one of those questions where I have to just slap all these vectors into a matrix and row reduce. But the reason why we need this couple of sentences ahead of time is so that when I look at this matrix, I don't say to myself, wait a second, where did this matrix come from? How come you're writing down a matrix when I asked you a question about vectors? What does that matrix have to do with these vectors? So this initial sentence, and I call this the preamble, or sometimes you could call it an introduction. That introduction tells us what's going on. This tells us what does this matrix represent. And that's important because once I row reduce this matrix, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip the row reduction in this video just to focus on the interpretation. But when I row reduce this matrix, this is how that's gonna work out. So, I need that introduction so that when I get the row reduced matrix, I know what I'm looking for, right? So I wanna know, does this equation have a solution? And to understand whether I, a, a vector equation has a solution, we know that what we need to do is look in the last column of this matrix. And we need to ask ourselves, is there a pivot in that last column? And in this case, yes, this last column has a pivot. And we know that that means that this vector equation is not consistent, does not have a solution. So the vector equation has no solution. And again, I don't wanna just end there because I haven't directly answered the question. 
the question says, is B in the span of V1 and V2? Now, I found an equivalent question, but I want to go back and make sure that there's no doubt in anyone's mind what my answer to that original question is. So I'm going to say, so B is not in the span of V1 and V2. So again, I think the tendency is to focus on the row reduction and skip all this sort of like um, the dressing around it, right? And make sure that we explain, okay, what is the vector equation that we're solving? How does that relate to the question that's being asked? Can we answer that question about vector equations and then tie that back into the original question? So make sure that you have all those pieces there as well. So now we have an example of the more complicated question where we don't have a specific vector B. All we have are a handful of vectors and we're asked, do these vectors span all of R3? So what we're going to use is the spanning columns theorem. And the spanning columns theorem has a bunch of statements. And those statements are either always are either all true or all false for any given situation. And so the way that we're going to use the spanning columns theorem is that one of those statements is uh, the vectors v1 through vp span rn. That's one of the four statements in the spanning columns theorem. I'm just going to focus on two of the statements because those are going to be the ones that are going to be most useful to us. And then this, the other statement is that the matrix whose columns are v1 through vp has a pivot in every row. Now, again, in this video, I'm not going to go through why that theorem is true. I go through that in the lecture video for lecture nine. So go ahead and read through and, and watch that and, and understand what's going on in that video. But the way that we're going to apply that theorem is we're going to say, well, if this is the question that's being asked, if they're asking us the first question, we're going to instead answer the second question. And we're going to say to ourselves, well, if the second question, if the answer to the second question is yes, then the answer to the first question has to be yes. If the answer to the second question is no, then the answer to the first question has to be no. Because again, the spanning columns theorem says that these four statements, only two of which I've written down here, they're all true or they're all false for any given situation. So if we can answer the second question, the one about the pivots in every row, if we can answer that question, then that'll answer the question about spanning. So we should say that, right? So again, the, the extra writing, the preamble and the conclusion here is to explain to the person reading my solution what is going on, right? So rather than just jumping to a matrix made out of these vectors, I'm going to explain to the reader what's going on. So we will use, and again, you don't have to phrase it exactly like this, but you got to say something, right? So we will use the spanning columns theorem. To check whether there is a pivot in every row of the matrix whose columns are u1 through u4. And now I can write that matrix down, right? I don't want to just write the matrix down without explaining what the heck is going on. So now the person reading this knows what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to uh, skip over the row reduction here, just because that's not really our focus right now. And when we row reduce this, we're going to get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 5 halves, negative 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, now, a common thing that happens at this point is you look at this matrix and you say, ah, pivot in the last column. That means something bad. And you sort of go off and, and think about that way. But remember, that's not what we're doing right now. This is not an augmented matrix that we're reducing. This is a matrix that we constructed so that we could use the spanning columns there. And we're not looking to see whether or not there's a pivot in the last column. What we're looking for is whether there's a pivot in every row. And in this case, if we look, there's my pivot, there's my pivot, there's my pivot. There is, in fact, a pivot in every row. So the answer to my question is yes. So I would say something like, since there is a pivot in every row, yes, right, again, I want to be unequivocal. I don't want there to be any doubt what the answer to the question is. Yes, the vectors u1 through u4 span r3. And again, that's my conclusion at the end.
So again, don't just row reduce a matrix, right? Make sure that you're explaining what does this matrix represent? Why are you row reducing it? And then once you've row reduced it, what are you seeing? Based on where the pivots are, what does that tell you? Okay, so if you're looking at the first type of problem that we talked about, you have a specific vector B. What you wanna do is set up the corresponding vector equation, x1, v1 plus x2, v2, all the way through xp, vp equals B. We construct the corresponding augmented matrix and we row reduce that. Once we have our row reduced augmented matrix, we're looking to see whether there's a pivot in the last column. If there's no pivot in the last column, then the vector equation is consistent. And so we would say, yes, this vector B is in the span. But if there is a pivot in the last column, then the vector equation is inconsistent. And so our answer would be no, this vector B is not in the span. For the second type of problem, we're using the spanning columns theorem. So we set up a matrix that has its columns being the vectors that we're given. And we're looking to see whether there's a pivot in every row. We build that matrix, we row reduce it. If there is a pivot in every row, then our answer is that yes, these vectors do span Rn. But if there's not a pivot in every row, then our answer is that no, these vectors do not span Rn. So just some general approach and, uh, approaches and advice here. Again, I've said this a few times, don't just row reduce the matrix, especially if we're using technology to row reduce the matrix, which if you were, you're not doing already, we're gonna be doing soon. So if you're using your calculator or a software package to row reduce your matrix, that's not something that you're even doing on your assignments anymore, right? So you wanna make sure that you explain what does your matrix represent? What are you looking for? Are you looking for a pivot in every row? Are you looking for pivots in the last column? Are you looking for something else? What's going on? And another just general piece of advice is make sure you understand the terminology. Make sure you understand the vocabulary words. So there's a lot of vocabulary in this course. So that allows you to translate questions that involve some of these vocabulary words like span or linear combinations or some other things that we're gonna learn later on translate those questions into questions about equations or solutions or things that are a little bit more grounded, a little bit more approachable. And again, make sure that you write a conclusion and make sure that you are very clear about what the answer to the original question is. So you could say something like, well, since there's not a pivot in every row, these vectors do not span R5. Or, well, there was a pivot in the last column, so the vector equation is inconsistent, and that means that this vector D is not a linear combination of W1, W2, and W3. And again, what you say exactly is gonna depend on the actual question that's being asked. But I hope this video has helped. I hope this gives you some general advice. As always, um, you know, watch the videos, look at the example problems, and uh, use those as a model for your own solutions. Good luck.